four months ago today, stood in this very spot waiting for a tow truck dealing with this monster. It's been fixed since then. But right back there is where my transmission failed on me. I just thought I'd take you guys down memory lane. Before I do that, I'd like to wish everybody a prosperous and happy new year. Today is January 1st, 2024, and uh, I hope you all have a prosperous new year. Make it a good one. Let's get to the nitty gritty of the video. Well, this just might be the end of the line for the Mazda Protégé. Um, God, I gotta tell you, this one hit me by surprise. I mean, uh, here I am out here on Eisenhower Boulevard. Now this is right beside Tampa International Airport. This, air, this road runs here. It's coming down this road here, the service road, as you can see here. And all of a sudden, I was doing about maybe 40, 50 miles an hour. And then suddenly, the gearbox locked up on me. Front tire skidding to a halt. Um, I had smoke going everywhere. I was like, what the hell's going on? And uh, I couldn't get the car in or out of gear. And uh, right away, I started seeing smoke coming out of the front of the engine bay. And when I, I got out and opened the hood, I saw, uh, let's see if I can get it here. You see all this stuff here? This is like, uh, this is uh, like fluid from the engine mount. You can see this is all fluid. These, uh, these mounts here, or at least this particular mount, uh, it's fluid filled. You can actually see, um, you can see the, the mount is all wet down at the bottom. See, especially from this angle, you, yeah, there you go. You can see bottom of the mount is wet with this hydraulic fluid. These are fluid filled mounts. It was such a jolt that it busted that engine mount. And, uh, well, I locked up both front wheels, couldn't get the car out of gear. Uh, <laughs> there was a guy behind me in a Ford Explorer. He slammed on his brakes and he almost hit me, but he didn't. He came within, <laughs> I'd say the front of his bumper was about right here where he stopped from the back of the car. And uh, it was pretty scary because it was a very loud thud and then lots of white smoke from the tires and a lot of bucking and jolting and a lot of noise and I had a bunch of traffic behind me I immediately turned on my emergency flashers and I got out and told everybody to go around I just I think I just damaged my gearbox one guy said hey what's going on did you did you run over something I said no I think my gearbox locked up on me and he was like oh man sorry about that dude says I almost hit you I was like yeah I know I'm, I'm sorry you know all, all you can do is apologize um, this one just kind of snuck up on me I wasn't expecting this at all I mean this car has well north of over 200,000 miles on it matter of fact I had just got back from Orlando maybe about a day and a half before this occurred so I'm kind of lucky that this occurred uh, close to where uh, I can get it fixed and I wouldn't incur such a big towing bill because if uh, this would have occurred out on I-4 uh, near Haines City or something like that, oh my God, I don't think the towing bill would be worth <laughs> the value of this car. I think I probably just would have just left it there. Um, at the, it is at this point that I'm kind of closely considering whether I'm not, whether I'm, I'm probably, you know, I am going to fix it. But I, I did notice before this happened, um, it started whining a little bit and it would crunch going into third gear. I noticed that. And then, uh, but it, it would shift fine otherwise. But I just noticed the noise kept getting a little bit louder and louder. I heard this whining noise coming from the gearbox and I checked the oil level in the gearbox. It was fine. And uh, well, 
it just gave up on me I've heard of this happening on these particular cars um, I'm more than likely gonna fix it because I'm not in a position to let it go right now but I I got some other issues that just sort of all this stuff just sort of started breaking on this car for example um, I noticed that the reverse lights now that's part of the gearbox as well the reverse lights they just they came on and stayed on uh, that's probably the reverse light switch on the bottom of the gearbox that's probably damaged um, and I start having like when I turn the lights on at night I notice like this tail light is nice and bright and then this one's this one's kind of dim so I got an electrical problem in addition to that I got this issue which is this issue right here I was actually gonna do a video on this where if you look in there you can see the door for uh, the door for the fuel filler neck or for the, the thing it's missing and that's because it fell down inside of there <sighs> when that happens it goes into the one-way valve and it gets stuck and when you refuel the car the fuel uh, the one-way valve that's sitting at the you, know, you can't see it but it's it's near the bottom of the fuel tank uh, in that area the fuel door uh, the, the one-way valve uh, kind of sticks and then you get backup pressure and so you you're pumping the gas and then the pump stops you pump and then it stops you pump and stops and filling this car up shouldn't take no more than 10 nah, it shouldn't even take um, no more than a few minutes but it literally takes me almost 20 minutes to put fuel in this thing and then if that isn't worse I got other issues like for example <coughs> Um, over on this side there is a uh, you can barely see that but that's part of the fuel emissions um, the, the vapor canister that's part of the vapor canister for the um, for the fuel system right here uh, right here okay that canister there and those those hoses all that stuff is starting to give me problems um, I noticed when I, I had the car on the lift and I was running it I noticed the vapor valve had popped open and it was literally uh, uh, shooting out fuel uh, fuel fumes when it's supposed to send those back to the engine to be burned and sometimes when I fill up um, the system is malfunctioned such that sometimes when I fill up the um, it runs fuel out of the vapor canister so I don't know I'm really considering I mean I'll have to fix it for now but I think I'm gonna pull the plug on this car too much has gone wrong with it all at once it is an older car and for the most part it has been pretty reliable but I think this is the end the reasoning behind the statement that this may be the end of the line for the Mazda protege is well because it just might be. I already have my eye on two brand new cars for which one of them might take the protege's place. I'm not ready to buy at this very moment so let me take some time to explain some details here. With long life drivetrain parts such as gearboxes fail on these, you would think that there would be an abundance of parts available for resale. Think again. Manual gearbox cars are such a rare thing these days and the same is becoming an issue for older cars like the protege. In fact, I would take trips to the salvage yard to find small spare parts and I would take note of how many of these cars I would find in local salvage yards. The number has dwindled quite considerably. Most of these have already been crushed and though there are a few still available, most of them have automatic transactions. So I thought, no problem, I'll just find a Mazda 626 manual which had the same engine and gearbox as a Protégé, but now it's a super rare thing if you find a 626 in a salvage yard anymore. They have all been crushed as well, which means that's no longer an option. So here I am at the salvage yard wrenching away. And of course getting the part wasn't easy either. Oh sure, someone decided they were going to install these nifty looking coilovers on the vehicle. And the previous owner also decided to put these trick security lug bolts on the wheels. Because of this, I couldn't get the wheels off. And because of that, I couldn't get the axle nuts off the axles to remove the axles from the hubs. 
So I had to unbolt the control arms and the suspension to swing the knuckles out far enough to get the axles out of the gearbox. Another thing you cannot see in the images and video is the ground underneath the vehicle. It appears to be dry, but there's a pool of muddy coolant under the car due to someone pulling apart from the cooling system earlier before I arrived. The engine leaked coolant onto the ground, creating a large muddy puddle. I had to put down lots of carpet and trunk liners from adjacent cars to keep from getting muddy. And I got muddy anyway. In order to get the gearbox back to the protege where I could install it, I had to drive the Saab. That's something I didn't really want to do, but I had to do it. The reason for this is because I feared that something would happen due to the suspension on the Saab being so worn out, but the old Saab held up just fine. Most of what I filmed was done on my cell phone, so it's not the best of quality. I also needed to fix this quickly so that I could return to work, so I didn't have a lot of time to film much, so I took some pictures. Since this happened over the weekend, I didn't have access to a lift either, so I had to do the job on the ground, which is totally doable, it just sucks working on the ground. Here you can see the car on the jack stands and the old gearbox removed. Before removal, I drained the gear oil to get an idea what failed inside this gearbox. When the oil drained, it was filled with metallic chunks and featured a glittered golden prism on top. And you know what that means. Synchro failure. The whining noise must have been from input or lay shaft bearings. Despite having adequate lubrication levels, the gearbox was just worn out. Once I get the gearbox back in, I had another silly problem. The rubber portion of the hydraulic line for the clutch slave cylinder split open, leaking brake fluid everywhere. First, I went back to the salvage yard to see if I could get a user for cheap. When I got there, I discovered it was split open as well, so no luck there. I called AutoZone and they showed two in stock at the location near Bush Boulevard. So I took the old Saab and headed up to pick up the line. Once I got the part back to the protege, I installed the clutch line and bled the hydraulics. I started the car and found another issue. This one I had been battling ever since I got the car. On the frame there is a threaded stud. This stud holds the lateral support that runs to the front of the car and holds one of the engine mounts. I noticed the threads were stripped and cross threaded when I removed the gearbox a while back when I replaced the clutch. I should have fixed it long ago but it's just one of those things that you know should you not have to remove or replace a gearbox or clutch for a while you wouldn't necessarily need to worry about it. Needless to say, I never anticipated a gearbox failure or the need for another clutch during my span of ownership of this vehicle. Anyway, I started the car and I could hear the lateral frame making lots of clattering noise. This was because the nut that holds the lateral flame wouldn't get tight because the threads on the stud were stripped, so I had to fix it. I just so happened to have this toolkit with me at the time so I was able to rethread the stripped stud. This sucked for several reasons. One, I had to do this lying on my back while swatting at mosquitoes. And two, there's only so many times you can repair this until the stud will need to be replaced. And replacing it is near impossible. The only effective way to replace it is to get another subframe from another car. And I'm not sure if the frames are the same for manual and automatic cars. I would need to do a little bit of research here to find out. If they aren't the same, and because of the manual car scarcity, you can quickly see the problem on the horizon. Though the car is running okay at this point and the gearbox shifts okay, when driving in third gear I can hear a slight whine coming from the gearbox. It's quiet, but it's there. The whine sounds similar to the gearbox that failed. I suspect it's only a matter of time before I'll need another one. So far I've had two engine failures in this car, a crankshaft pulley explode and a recent gearbox fail. It has a mystery water leak that leaks water on my feet from under the dashboard every time it rains. Maybe it's a windshield seal? The electrical issue turned out to be corrosion on the contacts for the tail lamp bulbs. The reverse lights was the result of the metallic particles grounding the switch from the inside of the gearbox. The fuel vapor charcoal canister and relief valve still needs replacing along with the fuel filler neck, but that's not all. You may notice from this angle the passenger front door is not the same silver as the rest of the car. That's because some lady backed into the door, crumpling it and the mirror at the same time. The door is not the same color as someone attempted to paint it, and that car wound up in the salvage yard. I found that car, took the door and the mirror, and put it on mine. You may also notice the Mazda Speed muffler is gone and the front lip spoiler is missing. The front lip spoiler got damaged as a result of overrunning a very rather large raccoon. It dashed out in front of me as I drove on a very dark road in the Brandon Riverview area. 
I jammed on the brakes and swerved, but it was far too late. As far as the muffler, something bizarre just happened. The piping that attaches to the muffler just split open one day. I'm not sure what caused it. I've heard stories of this happening to those mufflers. Guess it was just a matter of time. To prove my point on the scarcity of the Mazda Protégé manual cars, I decided to visit one of the local salvage yards. Here's LKQ's online portal. In Central Florida, there are four LKQ locations, Tampa, Clearwater, Largo, and Bradenton. Of all the locations, Bradenton had four cars available, for only which one had a manual gearbox. I was searching for OEM front CV axles for a manual gearbox car. If the gearbox was there, I would certainly come back to get it, but honestly, I didn't think I would get so lucky. As the day I pulled the gearbox from the one I found, two guys showed up with tools and everything to get after the gearbox that I had gotten from the vehicle. But they were two hours and ten minutes way too late. And boy, were they not happy at all. Here's some footage from my visit. Sometimes you come to these salvage yards and you just get lucky. Now this particular protege, um, I actually came here to get the CV axles out of the car and somebody already took them out for me. I probably need to get a set of boots for them. But this was a manual transmission car. And you can see someone already has taken the gearbox out of the car. Uh, this was the only car here it was a manual gearbox car and you can see they've already yanked the gearbox that's because anyone who has these are probably experiencing transmission failures or they experienced a the transmission failure just like I did so these are genuine Mazda CB axles Okay, I didn't even have to pull out my tools. I came prepared. I brought my newest toy with me, and I didn't even get to use it. This is the Ingersoll Rand. Uh, I think it's called a W7175 or something like that. It's got a thousand pound feet of torque didn't even have to use it. I didn't use any of my tools. Yeah, they just they got what I needed. This part is what's gone bad on my axles. They're clicking. And on this particular axle, they just, well, they, uh, they took it apart and they're just laying here on the ground. Not a problem. The threads here seem to be in good shape. This still rotates fine. These are rebuildable. And the boots are OEM here. Um, which means probably not clicking. Totally salvageable. And the best part is I didn't have to work hard to get these. But anyway. got probably the most valuable part off this car which is the gearbox it's just gone it's just freaking gone so uh, there's some other stuff I want to get or try to get I want to take a look at issue and I had to do it with on my car you see 
I bet you that thing is down inside here. A little fuel door. Here's the valve that I was talking about. My head popped open. This looks like it's popped open too. And you get, when I had the car running, there was just fumes pouring out of this thing. So I wouldn't be able to get any of this stuff off this particular car. There are a couple other protégés. There's a green one sticking out right there. Let's go see what it's got. You can see on this car, this is an old one. This is a rusty one I took a picture of earlier. Same thing. I'm just hoping I'm not wrong, but uh, there doesn't appear to be a door in any of these. I specifically remember a door being on mine. I don't want to get underneath this car, it's too rusty though. There's one more protege up there. Let's see if that one's any different. Here's another O1DX. Rusty as hell as you can see. Interior. It's in pretty good shape. Look at those seats. Let's see. It's probably gonna not have a door on it either. Maybe they don't have a door. I'm not sure. Yeah. There's no door there. So maybe out of three protégés I've checked. None of these seem to have a door on them, but uh, they're all rusty. Look at this. Look at this. I'm not getting out of here. I'm not pulling nothing off of these cars. <sighs> so. automatic. This is, like I said, this is the Bradenton location. There's, uh, I think, four of these out here. And they're all automatics, except one. And that one that I showed you earlier, gearbox is gone. This one is not even a 2 liter, it is a 1.8, I believe. 1.6. I can't use anything on this car anyway. Great. This is the last protege they have out here. This one's black and it's been crashed. Or at least uh, the hood. It is. It is a two liter. Yeah, it's been crashed. The hood buckled. You can see the engine sitting out crooked. not rusty. No door. So I would say that uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is no door. Um, maybe it's not. At least the car isn't rusty. And we can see underneath this thing there's quite a bit of I don't want to do anything so Take a look underneath and see what it looks like. What? A spare? Wow. You never see spares in these. I won't be needing a spare. Hmm. Okay. Now this was the 2000. Now this is no one. Okay. So. What's. Uh, yeah. Let's 
take off some of these coverings so I can show you guys um, some of these uh, emissions parts. This car is not rusty and uh, chassis looks to be in good shape. The car was just crashed in front. Let's get to it. I've got something to lay on. Let's get in here. It's a bit damp. That's the fuel filler neck. This is, I think, an exhaust. It goes up, it's just a vent tube. And this thing right here is usually what leaks fuel. So I would be filling up fuel. Fuel would go in here. Okay. Go all the way down to the tank. And you can't see anything. Maybe you can, I don't know, but the fuel filler neck goes up there. Well, I'll probably have to remove the fuel tank. But I'm assuming that fuel was going through and to the tank, and it was backup pressure, and it was literally um, pushing the fuel back out of this vent. And this vent right here is what was leaking on my car. This one right here is spewing fumes everywhere. Which means something is not operating. Now this is a dust filter. This dust filter feeds all the way back through to here. And I think there's a charcoal canister somewhere in here. That may be it. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, I can't get to it because, as you can see, the car is actually sitting... Uh, Car's actually sitting. They have the uh, this wheel sitting right on top of this cover, and some of the emissions stuff is mounted to the bottom of the wheel well, so I wouldn't be able to pull it off anyway. All right, so that sucks. But this right here, uh, this appears to be a vent. It comes here. This is where all the fuel fumes was coming out. So wherever this hose leads, it is pushing the, um, the fumes out of here. This is supposed to be sent back to the engine to be burned. I'm assuming this goes all the way to the engine. To the, either to the, it goes either to the engine or the top of the fuel tank. I'd have to look at a diagram. But anyway, I can't get to any of this stuff. Not here. And they just screwed me because they set the car right on this. <sighs> See the problems I'm having? And getting this equipment brand new from Mazda is going to cost you an arm and a leg. How unfortunate. <clears throat> so, for all these reasons, um, I've kind of come to the decision that I'm I'm probably going to halt making videos on the Mazda Protégé um, unless it is a specific request that someone wants to see. Um, like I said earlier, I'm not, I'm not exactly ready to buy a car just yet. At some point it will get replaced. Um, options. I, uh, I have considered the following. I've considered, instead of just uh, getting rid of the car, I've often considered doing an engine swap. And you might say, well, why an engine swap? I thought of an engine swap for the very reason is that uh, if I can swap in another engine from a different Mazda, um, of course, and some of the emissions equipment that would work with that engine, I would do it. And I've kind of considered um, uh, the MZR 2.5 liter swap from the Mazda 3. I would have to do my homework and see if this swap will work, see if the engine will actually fit. I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. Um, engine and transmission uh, are very similarly sized. The mounting points are very close together. Um, that engine is probably about 10 to 15 millimeters taller so I would have to make sure the hood was shut. If not, I would have to modify the hood. Would definitely make 
an interesting swap. Yeah, that engine only has about 167 horsepower at about 170 pound-feet of torque, but if I go that far as to do that swap, it would likely it would likely be tuned with some forged hardware inside, something that would put out well north of 220 horsepower, no turbo. Um, it would definitely make an interesting swap, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or at all. Uh, I am certain that I have my heart set on um, getting a new car. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be... Uh, I've been looking at a couple of Subarus, I've been looking at a couple of Nissans, and I've been definitely looking at a couple of Alfa Romeos. The Julias are really nice. Um, so, and the reason for this, you know, uh, the whole swap and everything, I, I had you know, plan doing some uh, high performance engine work. I still have the cylinder head that I ported. Um, I wanted to maybe try that, but you know, I don't know if this gearbox is gonna last long and I'm very, I'm having enough time, hard enough time finding, as you could just see in the previous video, having a hard time finding gearboxes. I can find them online um, for like, but you know, uh, on eBay, they sell them on eBay used, but these boxes are seven, eight hundred dollars a piece. You know, getting them locally for two hundred and seventy dollars is a, is great because if it doesn't work, I can take it right out. If you buy it online and there's something wrong with it, you know, you got to take it out. You got to pay freight and shipping to get it back to whoever you bought it from. It could be a real headache. So uh, yeah, if I can't <clears throat> if I can't get the parts local, that makes it difficult. Um, so, yeah, I'm closely considering pulling the plug on the car. It's been a fun ride. I will keep it. Um, I'm likely to keep the car. If I get a new car, I'm likely to get, uh, I'm likely to keep the car until I pay off the other one because I do work with this car. And I'm going to be probably doing some videos explaining what that work is. It does that really well. And, um, yeah, I honestly I don't want to get rid of it. It's such a robust car. It's tough as nails. It, uh, yeah, besides the engine failures and the gearbox failure, it hasn't really let me down very much. Take my microphone off. So, uh, thanks for watching this episode um, of Retro Car Style. Um, Hopefully we can, I can work out something with this protege. If not, more than likely, it's it's not going to work out. I'm still going to look at doing that swap because I really do like the car. Uh, like I said, it's it's a it's a great little car. Um, putting a 2.5 liter really punchy engine in it would make it really responsive, especially in a lightweight body like this. It would make very make a very interesting swap. It's something that I've never seen anybody do. The MZR 2.5 in a protege i'm surprised no one has done that yet so uh thanks for watching and we'll see you next time <laughs>